Good afternoon. It is uh, a little bit after 4 o'clock on uh, Tuesday. Uh, I have limited time. I just want to do another box update real quick. Um, I have to go in to pick up my son from daycare in about an hour. So I'm just going to bang out maybe 10, 10 minutes of talking about what's still in my now playing box. I, re I uh, neglected to mention this last time. What was playing through the last video and what we'll be playing through this one is a span straight to hell. It's their uh, discography CD. 02 to 04, great thrashing, fast, pissed, negative hardcore from Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, this was put out by Gloom Records as part of that Crypto Comics order. So, first up, Death, Scream Bloody Gory issue. Beautiful uh, embossed cover, great sound. You know it, you love it, it's classic stuff. Uh, tied with Leprosy for my favorite Death record, you know. It's got all the it's got all the classics you need on it. Regurgitated guts, Evil Dead, etc. After that, I busted this out because uh, somebody on Facebook was talking about what a great record it is. Uh, obviously, without the cover, this is Rock and Roll Nightmare by Rich Kids on LSD. Uh, great Motorhead fueled kind of Californian punk. Uh, lots of lots of cool riffs and, and hooks and great stuff. Look forward to spinning that quite a bit now that the warm weather's here. Black Sabbath, Live at Last. Again, another a record that gets hated on. I understand, it's it's pretty pretty rough live sound, but I, I like it that way. Um, you know, the, the live version of Children of the Grave is fantastic. Sweet Leaf, Tomorrow's, they open with Tomorrow's Dream. i uh, been into this one since I was a kid. I think I had a cheap uh, drugstore cassette of it back in the day. Aggressive Response, this is an Albany band, another Albany band. This is a new band with uh, my friend uh, my friend Joey plays guitar. Look at these guys, a bunch of mushes. Um, stylistically, uh, I say stylistically too much. Sound-wise, um, some similarities to the great New York hardcore band Sheer Terror. A um, lot faster though, gruff vocals, real tough, mean, stripped down, up-tempo, hardcore punk, New York style. Definitely check it out if you like stuff like that. They deserve a lot more love. Angus, Track of Doom. Uh, I'm trying to remember where these guys are from now. I think the Netherlands. Um, possibly Holland. Early 80s, straightforward heavy metal. You know, um, melodic vocals. Lots of, lots of heavy stuff, good riffs on this. That's great. These guys we know are from Belgium. Acid, the third Acid record there. Engine Beast. Uh, they slow it down a little bit on this one. Um, but it's a it's a good one. It's a banger. Female fronted, as you probably know. Uh, that I picked up at uh, the Salem Record Exchange, which is a great kind of old school record store where you actually dig for stuff. You know, the, through all the Phil Collins and Joe Baez and what have you. Like they have, uh, they always have some pretty good stuff. If you happen to be vacationing up here, a lot of people like to come to Salem for Halloween, make my life a living hell. If you happen to be doing that. Go to a record exchange, and if you're going to Boston, go to Armageddon Records, best best record store in the area, run by one of the guys from the band Drop Dead. Um, first Jag Panzer LP there, great early 80s heavy metal, uh, mid-paced in parts. I was listening to it yesterday at work, and I, I kind of kind of thought that some of the vocals reminded me of Messiah Markelin. Um, seems like a lot of people that are into the heavier death and thrash stuff have been paying more mind to early 80s heavy metal. Um, I like that stuff a lot. You know, I'm starting to get into it a little bit more myself. I feel like people dig a little too deep. Some of the bands might be not as great as they think, especially with New Wave of British Heavy Metal. A lot of that stuff, you know, it isn't going to be better than Witchfinder General or Iron Maiden. But, hey, everybody's got their thing, right? Stars and Stripes. Also got this at the Record Archive. This is perfect. Late 80s American Oi. Uh, so many jams on this. Shave for Battle, We're Not Criminals, Skinheads on the Rampage, the little opening lick riff on that is will get you soccer rioting and pounding beers in no time. Um, side, yeah, like, uh, side Project is Slapshot, same vocalist, uh, basically the same lineup. Super great. If you're in the mood for, for oi, you know, street rock or whatever you want to call it, that's uh, a good go-to record or a good, good starting point if you're not familiar with the genre. Obviously, check out the British bands, too. 
or maybe first, but that's definitely something that should be in your playlist. Blood, Christbait, second Blood record, excellent death grind from Germany. I mean, I haven't heard anything by this band yet that I haven't liked. They have a ton of stuff. Um, you know, the split with Agathocles, I think, was the first thing I heard. It was either Agathocles or Psycho. I get confused. It's a lot of bands that do splits there. Um, yeah, just awesome. Like, maybe if it could be comparable to the more metal Napalm Death stuff, but it's a beast of its own. Kind of in the same wheelhouse, generally. Little Teutonic banger here. This is, uh, first Death Row record, Riders of Doom. Awesome. Um... You know, what you'd expect from Teutonic Thrash, you know, those kind of raspy vocals, incredibly fast, you know, heavy metal turn, like, ramped up to a million, you know, really, really awesome. I mentioned this last update, so I won't talk about it for more than a second, but it's the first Destroyer 666, Unchain the Wolves. This is on Hell's Headbangers. Um... So far, I've listened to all their records now. Um, this is still my favorite. It's just super memorable black metal. Like, a lot less of a thrash influence. Yeah, this guy right here. Blood Feast. Kill for Pleasure. This is on uh, High Roller. Jersey Thrash. Just dirty, mean... It's far, in terms of extremity, it's it's pushing the boundaries of thrash at an early time. Um, gotta put this on. I, I need to listen to it more. That's why it's in the box. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, as I mentioned, I have things on deck that I need to revisit that I haven't... Classics that I haven't listened to. This is in pretty nice, decent shape for, the, for its age. Uh, neat pressing. Welcome to Hell by Venom got that great iconic cover on the back that I think, I think Cyanide ripped that off. Um, Sons of Satan, Welcome to Hell. Everybody's favorite witching hour. I mean, go for it, you know. It's awesome. In League with Satan. The Meat Men did a great cover of In League with Satan and sped it up. And it's, it's great. I'll probably be talking about the Meat Men a lot on this channel. It's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite rude and crude hardcore punk bands that got metal in a good way, as opposed to some other punk bands. <coughs> Another one where I ended up without the cover. This is just the booklet and the awesome picture disc of Sarcophago INR, INRI. Another classic, you know, big influence on the Beastial stuff. Weird mechanical sounding drums, you know. Everybody should at least give this a spin, even if you don't like messy sounding proto black metal thrash Brazilian stuff. Ripper. One guy was in Sepultura for a minute. Most people know that. Uh. Deceased, Supernatural Addiction, Picture Disc, uh, it's on uh, Hell's Headbangers. Really came into their own with songwriting on this, a lot of melody, a lot stronger heavy metal influence. Um, I was in a band that had the pleasure of opening for Deceased, our very first show. It was Bedlam, it was in a big uh, big warehouse loft space in uh, Alston. It's a crazy show, it was a lot of fun, Deceased completely brought it as you would expect. Got a couple of records from Ares Kingdom here. The first and second one. First Return to Dust, second Incendiary. As I hit myself in the face with the record, sweet, don't care. Uh, this is a Die Hard right there. Um, unlike a lot of people, I if I see something cool that I want to use in a Die Hard box set, I do. This came with a back patch, it's on the back of my jacket. Um, guys from Order of Chaos, Order from Chaos, other than Pete Helmkamp, went on to do this. Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I don't know. You can use a, a genre name like Black and Thrash or something, but it doesn't really do it justice. It's truly unique. A lot of galloping stuff, a lot of mid paced, ma majestic, <laughs> um, slower building. Just great stuff. I mean, the songwriting on this is heads and heads above a lot of stuff. And for whatever reason, you know, I know these guys have their place and a lot of people like them, but it, it's, it seems, I got this Die Hard for next to nothing. It seems like people don't give them the props that they should. I mean, that's fine. A good price for me is appreciated. Um, mentioned this in my first one. I threw this back in the box because I was spurned to listen to it. It's the first creator I got into the EP. And I talked about it then. Um, the opening track, which I didn't really talk about, Impossible to Cure, total banger. 
total banger. Completely hooked me from the beginning. You could see it in the, the songwriting was a little bit more streamlined, and that was uh, showed what was to come on Extreme Aggression. Great finish record. This is a repress of World Without God by Convulse. Um, awesome death metal. Um, when I first heard it, I was surprised by how much more it would kind of had sort of an American, more just as much of an American than a Scandinavian influence. Uh, guitars are very full sounding. You know, it, it's not really like that sunlight sound. I mean, it's it's not Swedish. It's Finnish, but uh, very very heavy, dark. You know, great atmosphere to it. Great vibe. Love it. And then we have a couple of Frost LPs. Wanted to put these back in the hopper for further listening. Morbid Tales to Megatherion. I don't know. You know, it's a generational thing. I'm sure a lot of younger people just saw this online or whatever, but I remember seeing this in magazines and at the store, the, the H.R. Giger cover art with the Jesus is a Slingshot and it blowing my mind and scaring the hell out of me as a kid. Um, everybody should be familiar with Celtic Frost. You know, they expanded their sound a bit on this one but didn't go nuts with the experimentation like in Into the Pandemonium. Um, this is my favorite. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with the, the second full length. Van Helgd. Relics of Sulphur Salvation. This is a band, <clears throat> there was a, again, before the whole incantation craze, there was a, a bunch of bands doing the sweet death kind of thing, kind of sounding like Entombed and un Unleashed and all that kind of stuff. Well, more so Dismember. Um, and Van Held was one of them, and I bought their first couple of LPs, and it did absolutely nothing for me. There just wasn't a, enough in the way of hooks. Um, I kind of flipped them and was like, whatever. The past two that they've done, uh, Recently, the Relics of Sulphur Salvation, and I um, can't remember the name of their most recent one off the top of my head right now. They're both, they've, they've progressed a lot. They have a lot of catchy, high-end um, melodies, riffs, a lot of stuff that hooks you. Very, very evil, like, ancient atmosphere. Um, fantastic, fantastic stuff. This is, pretty sure, a bootleg of Tormentor's... Anno Domini, as we know, it's uh, Attila from Mayhem's project in Hungary before he was recruited. Doesn't do the same kind of vocals he does in Mayhem, but uh, it's uh, it's great. It's super unique um, thrash with a very blackened kind of feel to it. And this wasn't released officially in any format other than tape for years because of the country of its origin. It's cool to have this. Uh, this version of it, whether it's legit or not, it's probably not. Protector. Golem. Again, um, you know, it, this came out in 88, and it was before Black Thrash was a thing, like a, you know, a focused, preconceived genre. This was just thrash metal at the time that was really, really turning up the notch as far as intensity goes. Shrieky vocals, um... When people talk about the Teutonic stuff, I don't see Protector getting mentioned nearly as much as some other bands. Um, but yeah, this is this is awesome. All their early stuff is awesome. Wolfpack, All Day Hell. This is uh, from the late 90s. I bought this at a place called Below Records, I think, uh, that was a short-lived record store in Boston. Played the hell out of it at the time. Uh, this is to be played, I still haven't spun this, but in, I don't know, like five years at least, but it's awesome, you know, if you like bands like Tragedy, bands that kind of mixed Discharge and Motorhead, which has been a big thing lately, as I've mentioned, but these were, th these guys in Genocide SS and a few others were like the first to kind of, kind of bring those two styles together in the context of um, the era, which was the late 90s, and this might be my favorite from them, it's just... It's a mean, it's a mean record. Good songwriting. Um, they turned into a band called Wolf Brigade later. They did a lot of records, but uh, this is the only one I, I have. The only one I really need. I feel, but by all means, you know that might change. Might go on a kick. 
some more Varathron in the box. This is a Demos collection. Um, great double vinyl. Not even a Die Hard. It's got this gorgeous booklet with tons of interviews and zine clippings and stuff. Nuclear War now. Yosuke doing it right. Genesis of an Unaltered Evil. The first Demos. Kind of a rough listen. Very unique, but really odd uh, effect on the vocals. This weird echoey frog <laughs> frog processing. Um, but everything on it's great. Crown Court. Back to the Oi. This came out last year. Great street rock. I mean, it's a tough genre sometimes to, to pull it off correctly. It can come off as kind of forced um, and cheesy at points. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, th this record is the best one that I've, along with a, the LP by a band called Vanity from New York, like one of the best street rock or oi records I've heard in a while. Um, mean as hell. They're actually from England, so, you know, that's something you don't see as often nowadays, so that's good. Uh, Metal Massacre. Man, my Roman numerals suck. I hope I'm getting this right. <laughs> Metal Massacre 5, I believe. Uh, this is great. Um... Possibly my favorite of all these comps. We got Omen, Voivod, Attacker, who are great. Um, intense heavy metal, speed metal stuff. Future Tense, early overkill track, Death Rider, Fate's Warning, Metal Church. Can't go wrong with early Metal Church. Lethal with, an, with a Y, Sin, uh, Final Warning. Probably, maybe not the first, but one of the earliest Hellhammer vinyl appearances, Crucifixion. Uh, great crossover, weird crossover band Mace is on this. I think they're from Seattle. Uh, and Jesters of Destiny, who are French and pretty unique from from what I remember. This is a this is a good one. Metal Massacre, I believe five. If I have that wrong, shame on me. Didn't pay attention in school. And uh, yeah, that's the whole box. I kind of ripped through it, but I wanted to get this done because I work uh, I work a lot. I work overnights. And uh, there's a ton of gigs coming up this weekend, so I probably won't be nerding out in front of my phone. Uh, much to your chagrin, I'm sure. Well, everybody have a good week, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.